Hi, welcome back to Studio Tamara, the Mystical Paintress, uh, Michigan. Day before Easter today, it is in the 40s. I've got peanuts for the critters, and I'm going to paint these daffodils right here. So if you want to paint some narcissist daffodils, follow along. I'll show you step by step through this video. Don't eat them. They are toxic. They're poisonous to pets. So here we go. Step one, use the viewfinder and decide on a composition you like. Plain air painting puts you in touch with the magic of nature. So I decided to go with vertical versus horizontal. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just suggest the negative shapes of these daffodils. So for example, the first one just kind of comes in like this. And I'm not painting the daffodil, I'm painting the spaces behind it. That's what negative means. And in order for something to have a lot of darkness, you need a lot of light. So <clears throat> what, what I've done here is I've mixed some green and I've mixed, mixed some black and some sap green. And I'm just squinting and kind of getting the feel of the flowers. Oh, we have a little friend. Oh, my little friend. He's in my little, right by my boot. Oh, hi. Hi. Are you eating all my peanuts, you silly thing? Look at you. Hi. Hi. Sometimes the best part of plein air painting is nature. Well, sometimes, always. Okay, I'm gonna have one flower up on top here and these two are gonna go down below. So I'm just trying to capture the shape here in a very kind of abstract way. And then there's a lot of different running out of paint here. Let's get some more paint. I'm only using sap green and black right now. And I'm just squinting. Oh, here comes our little buddy again. Where is he? There he is. He's in the daffodils. <laughs> Chippy. Um, so this one is like here. I love how they each have a personality just like a person does. And I'm just suggesting them and I'm going to refine it a little squint and kind of bring in a little you know I'm very happy to be getting back out painting getting back outside um, I lost my dad recently and it's been a it's been a hard time. If you notice the growing pattern on daffodils, they kind of, they're kind of like, like stakes, like sticks. They're kind of, you know, the growing habit as a plant, the leaves are very pointed and So we want to make sure that we suggest that in here. And we're going to put a couple over the top when we're done as well. There's a couple here like this. And I just want to do a realistic interpretation of these. So I want to get the feel of, oh yeah, those are daffodils when you look at this. That's my main goal. 
I want to keep it loose and free and artistic too. I have a chippy down by my foot. So I'm taking sap green and black. So getting back to our painting, I am studying the daffodils and then I am going to come in with a new clean brush. My tripod is bouncing, I apologize. And I've been using this green six and this is a <coughs> filbert. I'm going to be using this four. Look at this little chippy. Still just using black and green. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this lighter, take a little cad yellow light and a little sap green, put a little light in here, put a little bit of this spring green that we see and it's intermittent meaning you lift up your brush and then you put a little in you might want to add a little white just to give it a little sun because there's spots in here where it's lighter you don't want to overdo this uh, Take a little bit of just the sap green at the bottom. Your goal here is treating the illusion of daffodils, right? Not sticks. And we're gonna put one here. Okay. Get a little bit of the dark again. Go back in and kind of correct places it may not look right. Now we're going to go into my soul tech here. Grab some brushes to do the flowers. So we need clean brushes because you don't want the yellow and the green to mix. So take a little straight cad yellow. We need some cad yellow light. Cad yellow light is such a great color. When you add it with white, it's like the best highlight color there is. 
Just try not to get green in it. See, there's a little green there. We don't want that in there. Painting is so therapeutic. It's, it's really, oops. It's just so therapeutic. Almost as therapeutic as these chipmunks I've got here on my feet. Hi, bud. We're painting. There's our easel. There's our boot. There's our friend. I'm gonna try and hold this as still as I can. I'm literally holding it in my hand. So, um, taking a little bit of the straight. Oh, see, I got green in there. You don't want that. So right away, get clean oil on your brush. Using straight cad yellow. And I'm going to go to the darkest part of the flower, which is the middle part here. If you get green, wipe it off. Go back to your straight yellow. Starting to suggest it may be a daffodil. Well, we still have a lot of work to do. It's a different, different light, light colors. Um, we need a little shadow. So we're gonna add a little cad yellow and a little yellow ochre, kind of. And we're gonna put a shadow See how that all of a sudden will give us a little three dimension here. Remember, anytime you're doing art, the magic is in the subtleties. Just hope I don't step on one of these little chipmunks. So we are kind of putting in squint and you'll be able to see where the darker parts are, certainly. Just squint. I hear the blackbirds are wanting to come in now. Okay, I'm going to take another clean brush. Let's see what we got in here. I'm going to take this little guy. It's a rosemary, size one, flat, long. And I'm going to do some just cad light and white. Cad yellow light and white. I'm gonna mix that. And then I'm gonna suggest in here So I'm just trying to duplicate what I'm seeing here. And I'm not telling myself this is a daffodil. I'm telling myself 
This is yellow. This is this big. This is yellow. This is this big. Hi, chickadee. There's yellow there that's that big. There's yellow down here. And it's gonna go right off the board. So this here is cad yellow that I'm using. And I'm just suggesting, I'm not trying to do a photographic interpretation. I'm not trying to, you know, enter a show with this. I'm just capturing the impression of what I see. That's all I'm doing. So now I need a little more of the cad yellow, not cad yellow light. And I'm going to put that here on this, like so. And I'm going to put some like this, like so. And I'm going to put a little there. So I'm kind of modeling this and building this as I go. Just by looking at the movement of the flower, the different yellows, the different values. I'm going to add some white now. And actually, maybe it would be better if I held this whole thing for you. Um, I need to get a little bit of green in here, just a little, because colors reflect each other. And if you look, if you look, I do see a little green in here. So, a little is okay. As long as we're maintaining, I don't have a film crew. I don't have a, you know, any fancy stuff. I just have a cell phone and I'm videoing these for you for free to help you learn to paint. So um, I apologize if it's moving too much or, you know, it's not perfect. I, 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 I don't intend to make it frustrating for you. I'm just trying to help people learn how to paint. I've had some comments though that, you know, my <sighs> my video is a little shaky or whatever, so I apologize, guys. All right, the bottom is a little green, green and yellow. Kind of like that. And so is this top one coming off of it. I'm just looking at what I see and painting it in. Okay. Looking at what I see and painting it in. And if you want to do this step right here, what you need to do is take some white and some cad yellow and you put it just where you see it on the painting. If you put too much cad yellow, it won't look convincing. So you need to make sure not to let that smear in with the green. I even have a little bit of um, extra pile here where I'm taking white with yellow and I'm going to kind of try to get the edge here of this, just like that. So if you're having trouble with that, I just load the top of the brush with white and then I have the cad yellow 
and I am actually going to put this top piece like this so you can see how all of a sudden it becomes three-dimensional when you work with values and colors instead of trying to draw lines of a flower so if it's too green down here it does look a little green we will uh, kind of come in here with this light and we're just gonna mimic the shape of the flower the best we can. The top of this flower, we've got this also we need to paint in. This is the back petal that we started about 15 minutes ago. It's not quite as dark as the center. So you wanna make sure you have even color. We're starting to get there now. Cool thing is, this is right in my yard and these chipmunks come right over to see me. I'm not afraid. I'm not even afraid. Hi, buddy. eat a peanut. I'll eat a peanut. Tastes like a peanut. It's starting to look a little more now like a daffodil. I want to get rid of some of the real obvious lines even though they have them. Put in a couple more dark spots next to the light. And again, this is just an impression of these beautiful flowers. This is not a studio painting. So many times people think, you know, that's there's a competition or, you know, who can make the most photographic painting. And painting is not about that at all. Painting is about your connection with nature expressing your feelings, enjoying what you're doing. And um, creating something meaningful to you. Enjoying yourself, expressing yourself as a human being. That's what painting's about. So you know, if you don't have the best painting, who cares? Okay, I'm going to do some highlights and then call it quits. So this is starting to get there. I have a few minor details to fix. Um, right here, the top of this. There, that fixed that. And then this one, same kind of thing. It got a little muddy. Needs to be brought in. Like that. And then we need a little, just a little dark to designate that here. And these are the things that, that will make a big difference, too, in the painting is, you know, um, the subtleties, as I mentioned earlier. Got to add, a, oh, I have a chippy on my foot again. Got to add a little dark in here and in here. And I'm just suggesting it. Notice I'm not 
I'm not trying to paint this in. I'm not trying to draw it in. I'm just squinting and suggesting where I see it should be suggested. It's so interesting because nature is just so, so random. And then got a little bit here, kind of goes like that. It's starting to, um, I think it's finally starting to look how I want it to. Okay, um, we're gonna also put just a couple little hints of yellow. Just because, or even we can use white. Just a couple hints. Because also we gotta remember this is art. You know, I think it's good just how it is. Here's my critic for today. What do you think, Chippy? Huh? Hey, what do you think? You want, you want to sit on my hand? So for a quick, beautiful impression of some spring daffodils, I think I captured it good enough. Um, so you just sign it and enjoy it and remember the birds singing and the chipmunks and the beautiful memory. So I am going to bring the painting down into the flowers and see how well it matches. Let's see. Believable? Thank you for painting with me today. Thank you to all of my subscribers and my Patreon followers. I hope you had a good time painting. My paintings are uh, available in my Etsy shop, Studio Tamara, and I have a book called Plain Air Painting, Tips and Tales. I hope your daffodil painting turned out wonderful. See you next time. Paint on. <laughs>